So I was very excited. Um, I remember when you kind of sent a tantalizing email and said, I have an idea for your Hush series. And in the back of my mind, I was thinking, I really hope he's going to suggest Hans Ote's Book of Sounds. This was one that I had kind of found on my own and really wanted to do. Um, so I would be curious how you actually came to know about the piece in the first I'll place. I'll give you a very millennial answer. Um, Apple Music, <laughs> recommended. <laughs> I, YouTube would actually be my answer, so, you know. I discovered it and just knew nothing about it, but just fell in love um, listening. And then I recently premiered uh, Shimmer, a piece of mine uh, for piano electronics, and it had to do a lot about the space between notes and the resonance of notes and the piano as an instrument um, of tuneful sound. And it had a lot of connections with Hans Ota's piece, uh, both in some way stylistically, but also concept wise. So I played it at, played some pieces, uh, some movements of it as an encore. Um, and just the more I researched and the more I played, um, the more in love I fell out with this piece. Um, and I, it's hard to say what one's favorite piece is, but I can definitely say that this is my favorite piece to play. So can you talk a little bit about kind of how you are supposed to interpret the score, I guess, at a broad level, and then also how you personally are approaching the piece? Well, one thing that Hans Ota is, as an artist, is a synthesist. He very explicitly, both in his program notes and in his artist interviews, and also you can just tell from the work, he's thinking of the piece from audience, performer, and composer perspectives, and he wants those all to be, to have a great communication with each other. It's not a traditional score in that everything is written out. Um, there's no room for different note choices, but um, the, often the phrasing and the amount of repetitions and um, certain parameters are left up to the performer. Um, so I'm very much in the moment sh uh, shaping the line and shaping the delivery of um, the timing of how things unfold. Um, so I, I'm very much an active part of the composition in a way that other pieces do not have the performer um, engaged with the actual composition. Um, and similarly, um, I, I think he wants to create a space for the listener to immerse themselves and using the terminology of this series, meditate on the music and, mm -hmm. and he unfolds the piece in a very slow manner often um, in a texture that the listener can kind of insert themselves. Yeah, it's interesting. It seems like many times when you talk to artists or musicians or performers, you know, last week at my show at Yerba Buena, we were talking about this, like, what, what are you thinking about? What are you trying to accomplish in that moment of performance? And so many people will say, like, being in that moment, but I think in American culture today, that's taken on a very different, like, live in the moment, you know, and you're kind of like... It's like fear of missing out, sort of, do-do-do. Fear do, do. of missing out, being really kind of hectic and, like, trying to grab everything, whereas I think a lot of what we're looking at is almost, like, the opposite of that. It's clear that he is thinking about how to extend a moment, how to actually kind of stretch, you know, a moment, really exploring different ways of moving deeper, almost vertically in a moment, instead of constantly moving forward, mm -hmm. even though obviously we're always moving forward. I feel that it's very meditative as a performer mm -hmm. um, to play, because I have to really concentrate um, I mean, you have to concentrate for every piece, but I have to concentrate in a different way mm -hmm. um, to really be in the moment, or otherwise my everything just falls flat um, because it's not a piece you can read down. You know, you can't just right. be a great reader and power through it. Um, you have to really 
um, understand the, sh the shape of what you're creating and where you just were and, and where you are now. And um, th there's, there's a lot of nuance to it that you can't just, for lack of a better term, read down. Um, you can kind of be aware of where that vibration is taking you next. Mm -hmm. It seems like there's a lot to do almost, right? The sound is not just, it's not just like playing a note. It's about the resonances and how the piano actually responds and then how the pianist responds to what the piano is doing. Right. And then like that interplay seems right. really The timbre important. is very important. It's not just about the pitch class. It's about the note on the piano. Mm -hmm. And how that, yeah and almost like the vibration in the air and how that's then interacting as you move forward as well, right? Because as you're, since so much of it is repetitive, mm -hmm. you're almost kind of building these really slow layers over a long period of time and how the piano reacts to that. The listener is a partner of sound and silence, who in the quest for his world wishes for once to be totally at one with sound. <laughs>